Even in today's market, you know, you can pay for a bunch of wax dirt by just a couple of critters. That's a good sound right there. All right, so welcome back, y'all. All right, so today uh, we're going to be making wax dirt. Now, I did a video, it's been six years ago, that showed how I make wax dirt on what I would consider more of a production level. Um, now, a lot of you guys out there are not going to need that much wax dirt or going to be that set up to make wax dirt in that manner. Uh, you, how I do it is... I do you know, a couple hundred gallons of dirt at a time. I use a big concrete mixer. I mean, it's a whole process. Uh, but I do it once and I do it for the season, right? Now, what I wanna show you today is making small batch wax dirt. Uh, something that you guys can do in your shop. Uh, hell, if, you're, if your wife will let you, you can do it in your kitchen if you really wanted to. Um, but anyway, this is, this is small batch wax dirt. So real quick here, now, if you, if you don't know what wax dirt is, or if you haven't followed me for long, you know that I, I preach wax dirt. You know, I live in the asshole of the country, right? We get some crazy swings of temperature, freeze, thaw, rain, sleet, everything. Um, and you know, whenever you've got temperatures that can go from 60 degrees down to five degrees in, in a time span of less than 36 hours, you need something rather than um, dry dirt, right? So we use this wax dirt. Let me show you here real quick. I, I got two samples. Um, so right here, this is this is wax dirt. Um, let me see, let me move the camera here. All right, so can you guys see that? All right, so anyway, right here we've got, uh, we've got wax dirt, dry dirt. And I wanna demonstrate this. Basically what this wax dirt does is it, it allows moisture to not be absorbed. So you can see right there, poured that water clear to the top of that. And we'll pour water here into that pile. Um, let me take the camera off real quick because you guys aren't going to be able to see. All right, so can you guys see right there? I just poured that water in and look how quick it absorbs into that dirt, turning it into mud, no different than a rain. See what the wax dirt does? Nothing. That water just beads up. Oh look, there's a rebel dog. He's gonna make an appearance. He doesn't come out here very much anymore. All right, so see the wax, see what the, the water does? Focus you camera. See, you can just play around with it. It doesn't absorb into the dirt. And you can mess around with it all you want. It just, it's not going to, see you can try to make mud. You can't make mud with it. That's the power of wax dirt, guys. Look at this. It's already soaked in. It's mud. It's cakey. Look at that. If that was your set and it froze, you'd be done. Look at this. Can't do it. Can't do it. You can mess around with that water all you want, and it's not going to absorb. See, isn't that cool? You're going to have to sit down, bud, if you're going to be joining us tonight. I got a lot of moving around to do. All right, so there's wax dirt for you. Uh, basically, like I said, basically what it does is, it'll, look, I mean, this, this stuff here, it's frozen, it's mud. We don't want that. Uh, now, what we want is something that can keep our sets working through a bunch of different weather conditions where wax dirt shines. Now, wax dirt is expensive to make. Uh, you know, a lot of people go with peat moss, a lot of people go with just dry dirt. All this stuff will absorb moisture. I've had sets in the ground, guys, for two weeks, solid rain. You pull them out of trap bed, trap bed's full of water, but that trap is just completely free. Uh, it doesn't freeze in. All right, so let's get started on small batch wax dirt. Um, if you guys would like to check out the video I did, uh, the video that I did six years ago, I have not changed any methods since then. Um, I'll leave it linked below. It's actually, I had to watch it here before I did this. and. I talked a lot slower back then. Anyway, methods are still the same. But we're gonna make small batch wax dirt. So, what I've got here is, um, I've got a, a pot of dirt on the wood stove, right? We're gonna make it in half gallon at a time. Whenever I make wax dirt, I throw six gallons into my mixer at one shot. So, we're, we're, that's, that's the difference in production. That was the dog, by the way, that just bumped the camera. Lay down, old man. All right. 
So what we're gonna do is I'll show you the pan. Uh, now this is this is stuff right here. If you guys can see, uh, this is dirt that's cooling. So we're kind of in the process here. So I'm sorry. This is gonna be one of those kind of. We're gonna do, be doing lots of moving around. Um, lots and lots of moving around. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Here's some dry dirt. This is dry dirt, guys. This is, and whenever I say dry, I mean this dirt is hot right now. Um, and it's not steaming. That's how dry you want your dirt. Uh, we want it super, super dry. I gather this stuff up and pre-sift it in the summertime. Uh, if I need to, I solar dry it. But you need to start out with dry dirt. Very important. Because um, if you don't have dry dirt, then you're sealing in moisture, which will freeze, right? Wardrobe change. I got that fire cooking. Get the hell this dirt real hot. All right, so obviously you guys see I got the dry dirt. Now, I said I pre-sifted it. You need to pre-sift that stuff. Um, I use I use quarter inch hardware cloth as a sifter. Um, obviously, you know, th this is my sifter, guys. This this big giant, I pre-sift this stuff into uh, 55 gallon drums, right? So, you know, on a smaller scale, you know, you can come up with something, but I, I do think that the quarter inch hardware, that's, that's is what I'm sifting it down to. I think that's pretty important. Uh, you know, you, anything bigger than that and, you know, whenever you're trap fires, you don't want a lot of big gritty stuff in that dirt because they could potentially hold that jaw open, right? So I pre-sift it. So basically what I'm going to do is we're going to get this dirt good and hot. I got it sitting on the wood stove right now. Now I've got that thing in just an old roasting pan that I found in some trash pile in the woods. Uh, so that's that's kind of the situation that we're in here. You don't need a lot of fancy stuff. Um, but what I do have, you guys saw in that pan, I've got a half a gallon of dirt in it right now. Um, and what that, I, I want a lot of room to stir that stuff. You know, whenever you make this dirt, you need to be able to stir it. Don't pack it in too tight. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I use a concrete mixer on a bigger scale and it rotates it. So for this application, I've just got a dollar store spatula. I cut the bottom off and made it like some zombie apocalypse kind of utensil. And, uh, you know, that just lets it, lets me really work at it. I guess if I had a garden rake, you know, you could do something like that. Something just to keep it moving. Um, so anyway, I want to keep that stuff moving. Now this dirt's almost hot. Uh, so we're about ready to put our wax in. So let me show you about the wax here. Uh, let me get some things situated here, moved around, and we'll talk about the wax. All right, so we got changed up here. Now I want to talk about wax. Uh, wax is kind of important. Now you can buy flake wax from trap supply stores. Um, it's paraffin wax. So before I get a ton of questions, uh, you know, what kind of wax? Paraffin wax, guys. It's what you need is paraffin wax. If you use a soy-based wax, you're gonna get deer, you're gonna get animals that are want to eat that. Um, use paraffin wax. So. Uh, like I said, you can buy the wax at trapping supply stores that it comes pre-flaked. I prefer flaking it. Uh, I know there's some guys out there that's going to say you can melt it, pour it in. I personally have not had luck doing that in the past, getting the consistency. I like to use flaked wax to mix it in. Uh, now, that stuff's kind of expensive. So here's a hack for you. Uh, this hack has been going since I made the video six years ago. Uh, Hobby Lobby sells a 10 pound block. This is a chunk off of a 10 pound block of paraffin wax. Um, they sell it for right around 20 bucks, 25 bucks, uh, depending on where you're at. Uh, Hobby Lobby also, if you look, if I, if I can transplant it, I'll, I'll put a link down below. You can get 40% off. It used to be 30. You can now get 40% off a one-time deal, um, one item with Hobby Lobby, which takes the price down to like 16 or 17 bucks for a 10 pound block. Uh, anyway, this is what I use. I use it. I use the block wax and I flake it myself. How can you flake it? I've tried a bunch of different stuff over the years. Uh, I keep coming back to a hand plane. Um, I'll demonstrate right here. It's a little higher up than I'm used to, but you can just take this hand plane and just go down through this block of wax and you can see in just very short order I've got my hand plane set to just where I can push it. You can just shave off that wax and uh, that was cool. And uh, then just take it and just kind of crumble it up 
and you end up with nice flake wax. That's how I do it. I've been doing it for years at way, you know, 40 pounds a year kind of deal at a time. That doesn't take too awful long. All right. Now, as far as amounts, what do you need? So, where is my scoop? I'll be right back. All right, so as far as amounts go, because, I mean, that is kind of important. Um, so, this is how I gauge everything right here. This is just what I would consider a run-of-the-mill um, ice scoop, or, you know, it's what you would find in, like, an ice machine. Anyway, this thing holds a sixth of a gallon. Um, six of these will fill up a gallon kitty litter jug, which is what I, I haul my wax dirt out to the field with. You know, you're not, you don't want to be packing a five gallon bucket, trust me. Uh, I'll show you right quick here what I use. So, I get the, uh, I just get the kitty litter uh, one gallon jugs. They hold up, you can get about a year year out of them before they break, you know, from beating around. But anyway, that's what I use. So six of these will go into there. It takes one of these scoops for me to bed uh, a number four, or a number three, depending on what you want. A number four Duke, uh, which is the biggest trap we can use here. I can bed that thing with one scoop of this. So you're getting about half a dozen sets out of a gallon of wax dirt, just to kind of put into perspective for you. Um, you know, so you can kind of judge how many sets you think you're going to have and then, you know, figure in remakes and everything else. But that that's that's a pretty consistent deal. It takes just a little bit less for number three. But just round about figure uh, one of these scoops or a sixth of a gallon uh, per set, you know. And you'll, you'll find as you, you start using wax dirt, you know, you'll dig your beds nice and tight um, and everything else. All right, so we've got our, our wax and it's flaked. Um, now, as far as... Uh, amounts per dirt. Now we have some really loamy soil here and I've always waxed dirt. I, I don't, I've experimented a little bit with wax sand and I just always go back to wax dirt. Um, you know, you can mix in a little bit. Obviously the reason I mentioned that is because sand will not absorb as much wax. So you could save some, but the sand, it just, well, for one, it's heavier, uh, you know, and it just, I don't know. It just, I don't like it. I like dirt. So, uh, and that's what I use now. Pretty loamy soil here is what we've got. Um, so anyway, for a half a gallon of, uh, of dirt there, I've got a cup and a half of flake wax, or three cups to a gallon. Um, you know, obviously you guys can kind of figure out, uh, depending on your soil composition or whatever you got going, but basically you want that test that I did at the beginning of the video uh, you know, and, and test it and come back in like a few hours, you know, and make sure it hadn't absorbed. Um, you know, so anyway, that's that's what I go with. Cup and a half per half gallon I'm making here in this small batch or or uh, three cups to a gallon. So it adds up. Like I said, this is not a cheap deal, but you got to figure if you got traps that are frozen in, uh, even in today's market, you know, you can pay for a bunch of wax dirt by just a couple of critters. So that's that's always how I've justified it. But not only that, I don't like checking empty frozen sets. If I'm gonna go out and get up and go walk out there, get out of the truck or do whatever, I wanna go check a set that I know is working. So anyway, that's why we do the wax dirt. All right, so our dirt's probably hot. Let me set the uh, camera up here and I'll show you kind of how we're gonna mix this in. And then we'll get set up because we wanna keep this stuff moving as we cool it. Now I'm doing this on my wood stove. Uh, you know, you can also heat this stuff on a grill. All you're looking for is about 150 degrees. Uh, this paraffin wax, it melts at 133 degrees. Yes, I did my research. 133 degrees. So all we're looking for is about 150 degrees. We want this stuff to melt. Uh, so you can use a grill, you can use a turkey fryer, uh, you know, you can use a crock pot. Some people use a crock pot, um, but you guys can see, what I'm doing here, I've got this stuff just, and that's hot. You know, like I said, this dirt is dry. It's not steaming. It would be steaming if it was wet. Um, so anyway, I'm not even using a thermometer, you know. That's that's hot. Whenever you can stick your finger in there and it just barely stand it, that's plenty good, right? So what we want to do is we want to add our, add our flake wax here. Um, now, I don't like to dump it in all at once. This is what I'm talking about by some guys melting uh melting it and pouring it in melted i don't like that it's it's hard i've tried it it's hard to get the the consistency throughout um so i'm just going to keep stirring this 
this wax in and you guys will see the color of this dirt start to change. This is why I say don't fill your pot too awful full. Uh, you need to be able to have that room to stir this wax in. Um, that's why, you know, I use, whenever I use the concrete mixer, uh, it keeps the, it keeps the dirt moving. But by this dirt being hot like this, all you gotta do is just keep stirring it. And that wax will melt in. And you can see the color starting to change here of this dirt. It's almost looking like it, like it's damp. Uh, you know, it'll change from from super super dry to uh, to a darker color, and that's that wax coating that dirt. But you can see how fine this dirt is because I've pre-sifted it, and we just want to keep it moving. Just keep it working around. If you end up if you don't move this dirt as you're doing this, you'll end up with big clumps. Uh, that wax will, will clump up and it'll bind and then whenever it cools down then you'll end up with a bunch of clumpy waxy dirt that's that's no good you know you want to keep this stuff moving keep it fine so you can see here I've put my wax in in like three different go rounds you know roughly a half a cup a shot and uh, Just keep working it around. Just keep rolling it over. You can see I, it, I've got to where, you know, I'm, this is super dry dirt and I've coated it where, you know, it's not dusty. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're still making dust with your dry dirt, then you've not got it coated enough. So now we're going to take it off the, uh, off the fire there and I'm going to dump it onto my cooling situation I've built which is nothing more than a car piece of cardboard on uh, on my table here and this stuff will, it'll, it'll hold its heat obviously dirt holds its heat for for a long time all right so just gotta dump that stuff out on a piece of cardboard there got a little bit more mixing to do my little zombie deal didn't uh didn't quite get all the way to the bottom, but that's fine. We've got a little bit of working working time here with this um, because this dirt's still so hot. So anyway, keep working it. Now we want to kind of—I mean, you don't have to sit here and work it for for you know a half hour. It's going to take for it to cool off, but uh, you know you want to keep it moving just to keep. Uh, just to keep that stuff from, from clumping up because it is it is still very hot. Um, you know, and it'll hold its heat. So, big area here, you guys can see, I've covered my entire table. Uh, we'll, we'll make it, you know, spread it out a bit and uh, and just keep it, keep it moving. This is a pretty good mixture here. And you can see that little bit of, of dry, dry dirt that was on the bottom um, you know very little bit mind you probably less than a oh, half a cup or so that was on the bottom that we just didn't work it's all now been uh, been mixed in and we've got a really really nice consistency of dirt here so anyway I'm just playing and talking at this point but uh, anyway we're just gonna leave it spread out um, and I'll stir it here occasionally every few minutes. Uh, now I'll, you know, go ahead and get another half gallon going. You know, that's just kind of the rotation if you're doing this small batch wax dirt. There's not a lot of science to it. Obviously guys, as you can see, I'm sitting out in the first shed tonight having a few cold beers making some wax dirt. So there's nothing really strenuous about it. Um, I'm about to have to shed another piece of clothing because I've got the fire so hot. But uh, but anyway, so we're gonna let this stuff cool down, uh, and it'll take a minute. Obviously, it's you know it's uh it's pretty warm yet. But uh, once it cools down, and I mean cools down, then we can go ahead and uh, I just put it in five gallon buckets, and 
and it'll store fine like that. Uh, where a lot of people get mold issues uh, is, you know, because you can store this stuff from year to year. If you, as long as you start out with really dry dirt, that's the key to this whole thing is to start out with dry dirt. Um, as long as you start out with dry dirt, uh, I put it in a bucket and just crack the bucket, you know, just, just a little bit. Uh, you know, you can keep it from season to season if you have some left over, you know, but, uh, you know, pretty, pretty simple, straightforward there, guys. That's wax dirt. But yeah, like I said, just kind of keep this stuff moving here until it cools down. Uh, and then you're, you're go bucket it. Uh, you know, in this situation I've done, this is my third batch tonight just to kind of test it. Uh, I, like I said, I, I, I make wax dirt in big batches. Um, but basically by the time my dirt is heated up to flip it here, this stuff's cool and that's just a, a rotation that I've been going. And I'm crammed up in my little shop tonight. So anyway, that is small batch wax dirt, guys. Um, not a lot to it. Depending on your situation, you can make bigger batches, smaller batches, however you're set up to do it. Uh, but like I said, hopefully I've given you guys some uh, some some measurements, if you will, to kind of help you out. And you know, the biggest thing is to figure out how much you're gonna need in a year. Uh, at, you know, like I said, I, I get six sets to a gallon is basically what I get. Um, so y'all can kind of figure it out pretty, pretty straightforward from there. So with that being said, guys, uh, I'm gonna make another couple batches. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video, if you've made it this far and you learned something, enjoyed it, whatever, uh, do me a favor, hit that like button. It really does help me out. If you're new uh, to this channel, definitely take a look back at uh, some of my other videos. Obviously, I'm pulling videos from six years ago, y'all, that are still very relevant. Uh, I will leave the, uh, I did like a two-part series. Um, cringy videos, honestly. But uh, anyway, I'll leave that link down below if you guys wanna check out more of the production side of the uh, of the wax dirt making. Um, leave me a comment down below. I'd appreciate hearing from you all. With that being said, guys, as always, I appreciate the view. We'll see y'all next time. There's the old white-faced rebel dog everybody's been asking about. You gonna look at us, bud? Nope, guess not. <laughs>